So hi, hello, welcome again. I think this is really beautiful here. These are algae and plenty of other stuff, uh, diatoms I found as well. Not so many of them, but a lot of uh, cyanobacteria. And I extracted those by using a centrifuge and this is actually what I would like to show you today. But we have to start at the beginning first. Uh, this here is uh, the local university pond. Um, it was a nice uh, fall afternoon. I had a little walk there. Uh, the birds also liked it and they decided, well, why not try to extract some of the uh, algae that are in the pond there. And I simply wanted to take along a small water sample to put under the microscope. And, and the water is a little bit cloudy and this is a good sign because it actually means that there are a lot of suspended particles um, in there. However, However, I did find a problem and the problem is its uh, accessibility. I could not find a place uh, where I could take a water sample because I was really afraid of falling in. Um, because the water level was a little bit low, um, I think this is because uh, the past couple of days were a little bit dry. But after a few minutes I did find a place here. There are already a few decomposing leaves in there and this is where I decided to take um, a small water sample. And uh, just by looking at the water it's uh, uh, yeah, we can see that uh, it's pretty clear, the water. Um, it does look a little bit greenish and cloudy in the pond, but when you take out a water sample, it looks fairly clear. So I was a little bit concerned um, if there are enough algae in it um, or not. The first thing that you have to do is you have to balance the two, uh, the two tubes. So I added um, the, yeah, tap water in one, I added uh, the pond water in the other one, both of them perfectly balanced um, on a scale and then it goes into the centrifuge and uh, then I simply turn it up to the maximum level and I was kind of spinning it for I don't know how many minutes five minutes seven minutes nine minutes doesn't really matter I did not use a clock um, after a couple of minutes I simply went uh, back uh, switched everything off and uh, took out the tubes hoping to be able to find something and indeed I was very lucky and happy because look at this green so-called pellet uh, on the bottom yeah this basically means Means that there are plenty of algae there um, that I could uh, can put under the microscope so all of the algae concentrated now here um, on the bottom of the tube. Um, I used the pipette to remove the so-called supernatant. The supernatant that is the liquid that is um, on, this, on the top and uh, the further you go down the more careful you have to be because after all I do not want to um, yeah, accidentally remove the pellet as well but I did leave a small drop of water um, in, the, in the tube because I then resuspended the pellet using my pipette so simply I uh, pulled in uh, some of the liquid and then pushed it out again and this kind of mixed uh, the pellet again with the water a small drop goes on the microscope slide uh, and then cover glass on top and then everything went under the microscope and uh, to my surprise and to my delight I was able to see a so-called a rotifer still alive evidently it did survive the high G forces of the centrifuge yeah and uh, this is uh, another one over here yeah, you can see that there is also some water streaming in because I added a little bit more liquid so it was drawn beneath uh, the cover glass by capillary action and this causes the streaming of the water and uh, the rotifer was also quite happy <laughs> here um, also using its cilia to move the water around and feeding itself here. Yeah, of course plenty of algae and other un unidentifiable material here. Um, and of course, uh, quite uh, nice, uh, those long rod shaped structures, these are cyanobacteria. Um, yeah, and uh, this was uh, now a little bit in time lapse, so it was speeding up a little bit uh, to be able to see the movement better. Yeah, and here um, again, an assortment of different um, algae and other, yeah, microorganisms that I was able to find uh, yeah, in the pond water sample. So I can imagine if I were to let the tube stand for a couple of more days, maybe the algae are also going to reproduce more. Yeah, this chain uh, here uh, of cells um, also seems to be a form of cyanobacteria. You can even see the so-called this so-called heterocysts. These are the cells um, in um, the chain that are a little bit different uh, than the others. Uh, so we already see a little bit of something called cell specialization happening here. Yeah, and again, another place uh, under my microscope slide. And uh, I was able to see also some of those algae, um, probably Senedesmus or Desmodesmus. These are, yeah, also 
some very common species that you can find um, in, in, in the pond water. Um, again, I expect uh, to change uh, the composition of uh, the algae um, yeah, over the course of the next couple of months, of course. Yeah, and this one here, that's an easy one <laughs> to identify. That's, uh, that's a fish also living happily in the pond there. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope uh, that uh, this little uh, video kind of uh, motivated you also to try um, to use a centrifuge. If you do not uh, want to get yourself an electrical centrifuge like I have, there are also manual hand centrifuges available, you know, or you can try to make one yourself. But uh, I'm going to leave it at that uh, for right now. Wish you all the best and happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.